Hi, Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands here. Welcome everybody and thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, much appreciated. Um, today we are going to... I had a request to make some party decorations for a dinner that we're going to celebrate my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. So I thought, well, why not let my friends come and join me for the ride and uh, make some party decorations. So we're going to be starting with, I'm not sure what to name them, but they're going to be, instead of using candles, we're going to be putting these into the cake. So I've used skewers that you would use for grilling meat on a barbecue or something because they're nice and tall and heavy duty you can get sort of fairly large cocktail sticks but i think they're a little too short given the image that i need to put on them so that's why i've chosen this and they can be cut down to whatever length you need it to be so this is where our starting point so i've started the first one but i haven't put the 60th on the other side which i'm going to do one on each side I've done some die cuts in advance. I will be doing some embossing later, but that's for a slightly different project. I'm doing three little projects today. I need to glue this onto here, cut some more squares from my template and glue them onto my skewers. So I need a couple more skewers. I'm doing three all together. So I need a couple of skewers. I need four of these. So that one can go with that one and we'll glue that on in a minute move that to one side then I've got the other four cut out ready put them in pairs okay and put the skewers to one side so now I need to draw around my template and this is a diamond pattern wallpaper which I thought would be appropriate because the 60th of the diamond anniversary so I'm going to do the full square because the edge is not squared off of the wallpaper and I'm just going to do a faint line round and then we'll cut the squares out. So I'm putting it in like a diamond shape corner to corner as opposed to square on um, to give me the, the image of the diamond. So I'm just going to cut up here so I'm not fighting with the uh, wallpaper roll. We'll do a bit of that later with the uh, other things we're doing. Okay, so let's move that out of the way for the moment and we'll trim these round. Now these squares are two and a half inches by two and a half inches and that allowed me to put my happy 60th image on the square without too much left over, without looking overpowering. So that's one square done. My cutting's not fantastic, but we can trim it round when we glue it on. I suppose you could do this with a cutter and um, other type of papers. You need paper that's reasonably substantial, that's going to stand up of its own volition, not too floppy. So that's one lot. Right, that piece I can use to make some flowers with, so I'll put that to one side. So that's Miss Square's which I'm going to turn into diamonds in a minute. So we need a bit of scrap paper for underneath so that we don't glue onto the mat, that's all. And I need to have it diagonal. So we've got the skewer end to end. Now, what I've done so that the skewer holds in place while I'm gluing it is just literally put a bit of tape over the top just to hold it. So I do that with both of them. And I'm just using a bit of washi tape. So I'm going to use my Kalau glue in my little bottle. Go around the edges, down the long stick, around these edges. A little bit in the middle, under the stick. Doesn't have to be sort of completely covered, but just needs to be able to stick together. And then you've got to line up as best you can because the stick will take up some space so you will have a, a little bit of an edge where the, the stick is taking up some real estate. That side's okay, it's nice and flat. Make sure it's all together. There we go. So I can trim around this bit that's not quite marrying up or I can just paint it silver. See what we fancy doing when we get there. The next one. 
Now while we're waiting for those two to dry, we can be gluing this one on. There's a lot of gluing and cutting in this process, but I think you'll like the end results. Well, I hope you like the end results. I'm doing it a bit of a, a wing and a prayer because I've done a couple of sort of prototypes, but no previous uh, experience on this. Now I need to square, square this up on the diamond. So it needs to sit straight. So the six and the O are either side of the stem. Fantastic. I need to glue this one. Okay, that one's on. And this fine tip nozzle really helps when you're doing lettering die cuts as well because it allows you to get all the lettering stuck on without flapping about. Get these all drying and then we can cut. Oh, missed a bit. Come on. No good you flapping about in the breeze. That's better. Okay, so that's one done. Oh, should I say that's two done? So once again, this template is two and a half by two and a half. Now, so we will deal with these edges um, at a later date, but I want it to dry first. Now, I only got this request yesterday afternoon, so it's a case of use what I have available as opposed to run out and buy anything. So you may, if you try this project, may want to sort of think what you could substitute. You might want to use digital papers or scrapbooking papers or just coloured card. You know, work it to your own colour and theme, but this is the general principal idea that I came up with. Right, so they can be sitting over there drying and I'll introduce you to my next project and we can come back to those. I have a template for the banner and I want the banner to read Happy 60th Anniversary. Now, if I've spelt things correctly, and this I think I have, so I did double check them, I need a banner before, a banner for each of the letters for happy, then a banner in between, then I need 60th, 6-O-T-H, then another space, and then anniversary, and then a space. That's how I've done it. And I've worked it out, but I need 24 of these lovely things. So I've done one, so I need another 23. And I've attached them to the string I've kept the string on the roll because I don't know how long I need it to be. So I'm point in cutting it off if I don't know how long it wants to be and I don't want any joins in it. So I'm just going to keep unrolling until I've done it. I've allowed a knot at the end with a loop and about eight inches at the end for hanging purposes. And I want to do about an inch gap in between because it's going to be a long one otherwise. So I just need to mark so I know where I'm going to be putting my next one. Now I can't do these necessarily beforehand. I have to do it as I go along because I'm not sure where the next one's going to finish. I need to unravel this and I need to use my template. Now I want to make best use. So if I come this way, now this is an edge, so that'd be fine because that's the straight edge of the actual wallpaper. So I should be okay on that. I'm wondering if we can do this like this, line this one up, use that as my point. I mean, they don't have to be exact as long as they're a similar shape and size because they're not going to be stacking on top of each other. They're just going to be hanging on a wall behind the table. And you get the idea. So this is probably going to be speeded up now with me cutting these out and drawing these out. Okay, so we've cut all these out. I've cut 23 out. I have my mark where I want to put my next flag. So I need to turn it on its back. It doesn't matter that it's got number 15 on there because it's just made sure I got enough of them. That's why I put the little number on there and I'll rub that off later. I just want to put a line of glue and stick my string on and I'm thinking that's how I did it before but what if I taped it on and then rolled it over that might be quicker mightn't it a little bit of tape hold it in place this string is very twisty hold the string down with a bit of tape and then hold that down and then fold over and I can glue that bit down and trim these corners off bit of glue under the string glue on top here 
and hold it. Now this glue is an instant like art glitter or something, anything like that. What I'm gonna do is reach round and grab my little pegs and I'm going to hold it on with my little pegs and clips I've got um, till it dries. So move along a little bit, move along the line please. I'll try and hold my string down a bit. Now I need to do my inch marker so we know where to line the next one up. And then put the next one on. I can sit over there for a minute. That can go under here and line up. And a little bit of tape there to hold it in place. And a bit of glue under and over and around. And we fold it down. I think I need to get some more of these clips. They're quite, uh, quite fun. Okay, so I'm back from my um, fast forward and we uh, have got three stems made which I need to just trim around the edges of these and I've done 24 of these which will allow me to do all the lettering. Now I'll just let the tops of those dry a little bit while I trim these and make sure these are nice and tidy. Now what I'm going to do with these is just do a black line with my marker just to hide the rough edges and it makes it stand out a little bit better. It just gives it a slight edge and this is a just a generic permanent marker in black. So this is my bottom end. Now I need to trim these little edges off so that it look a bit neater but without trimming the string so I've got to be careful not to trim the, trim the string once again they don't need to be built to last and I haven't backed them because they're going up against the wall so they don't need to be double sided folding as I go because it keeps it neat and tidy and stops the string getting all tangled these little corners are just where I folded it over and it's slightly longer than the top edge because it reduces down on the triangle. And I will do the measurements of the triangle for you in a minute. I forgot to do that earlier, just so you, if you want to do the same sort of size. So it's six inches across the top, 15 centimeters. And from tip to top, it is 25 and a half centimetres or 10 inches. So this is the beginning. I'm turning them back around this way so I can do my lettering. Finish with the glue for the moment. Those are done, that's rubbish. Glue lid on. Now then. According to my plan of action I have on the notepad in front of me, I'm missing that one. 
And this one's an H. Now, I'm just wondering how I'm going to know which ones are which without getting them muddled up. So, I have a plan. So that's H. A, P, P, Y. So, if I cut the letters out, and then I can clip them to my little clippies to the top of my pay of my thingy. I can fold under. I've got to make sure I get them consecutive. Otherwise, I make sure I get them in the right order. Where's my A? That's my A. And that just gives me my next one. Should my P disappeared too? Why? So we'll start with those, then I'll mark the next lot up afterwards because I've only got so many clips. Now the next thing to bring in are these wonderful stencils. Now I've got these from Hobbycraft and they're just very large stencils. They measure about three and three quarters and they have the whole alphabet and all the numbers so I need to find my letter that I want to start with which is an H aha here it be so it's six by ten inches um, and then you make a mark at the three point and come down to the point either side, so it's equilateral. Okay, so for my H, let's move you on up a bit. I want to make sure that I've got my H the right way up. How do I know? Yes, I can read the writing on the bottom, so I want to make sure that this is straight. Now with the stencils, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the lettering Try and centre it, and I'm going to draw it round. See if it'll show up in the pencil. So I've drawn it round in pencil. You won't necessarily be able to see it very, or just about see it. The H, and then I'm going to colour it in my black marker. Do the first one and show you. And I've done it wrong already, but it doesn't matter. I'll just respace it. I was supposed to do the H on the second one in, not the first one in, but that's fine. I'll just move everything up one and I'll do two spaces between the 60th instead. So I need A next. So I've got to research my stencils. Next I have two bottles, a ribbon, a couple of bows and some wrapping paper and I'm going to 
emboss the wrapping paper with my diamond shaped embossing folder. Now I need to measure the depth of the bottle up to the where it indents because I'm going to wrap it in the wrapping paper. So that's three inches. I need three inches. Then I need to measure round the circumference at the bottom to see how many inches round it needs to be. So that is eight inches. So I need a piece eight by three and I need two of them. Okay, let's mark that up. So I've got two boxes, three by eight. Let's try and trim this up before it curls up on me completely. Now the writing on here says celebrate, enjoy, hooray, surprise, that sort of thing. So it's quite a nice generic paper. Now then, make sure my writing's the right way up and I want to wrap this around. Now I'm wondering what's the best way to do this. I think what I might do is put double-sided tape on the top and the bottom and then on the end all the way round and maybe one up the middle and then that will hold it on. But before I do that, while I'm trying to flatten these out, I need to make these a little bit heavier. So I have over here a funnel and some stones. And I want to put some of these stones through the funnel. Oh, my funnel's blocked up. All these stones are a bit bigger than I was expecting. I can possibly do it without the funnel. Let's have a go. Oh, yep, yeah, I can. This is just gravel I got from the garden. Doesn't have to be anything special. It's just really to add a little bit extra weight to the bottles because you're not really going to see it. So we need to make sure that this gravel doesn't move around. So all I'm going to do is put some tissue in, stuff it down to hold the gravel in place. That's it, it's not shaking now. now if I tip the bottle, I'm not gonna accidentally let the, all the stones come flying. Now, I'm gonna have a look in my washi tape because I want some pretty color washi tape to seal the top with. Now that's pretty, but it is not very wide. Aha, I thought I had, that's the one. Lovely jubbly. Now then, so I need Oh, nearly forgot the important bit. I'm going to emboss these to make a diamond pattern. So, come with me to the big shop. So, I've got my embossing folder. One side is raised and the other side is indented. And when you push it together, you make like a waffle effect and it pushes the paper up through. So and put my paper in and pop it on the machine. Now I'm only using one plate because the die, um, the embossing folder itself acts as a second plate giving you the, and I'm going through and back. And that has done that side. Now I need to turn it and put it back in the other end so I can finish the job the other end. And I need to do that with each of them. because the embossing folder is not as long as the paper we need to emboss. So that's why I'm putting it in and out. And lovely. And then we'll head back to the desk. Okay, so we're back at the desk now. And we have our very shiny embossed pattern. So now we're going to put our double-sided tape on the top and bottom and sides. Now then, peel this off. Now I want to line this up with the bottom of the bottle and get it as straight as I can. And then work my way around. Pulling it reasonably tight. 
as I go. Now I went a bit squiffy, but that will smooth out around the bottom. I'm not going to put anything on the bottom because it's stand standing on its bottom. So that's that bit done. It doesn't look too bad at all. I'm quite happy with that. Our ribbon will be wrapping round anyway at the top, so we should be okay with that. So let's get rid of these bits and do the next one. It's on. Smooth over. That's a little bit crumpled in places, but it gives the right effects. With that, bits of, bits of backing paper in the bin, what's it holding away? I've just got to deal with the ribbon and I'll just do the little trick with the lighter, just melt the edges slightly and it stops it fraying. Now I've got some crinkly bits here, which is fine, but I don't really want them on my jar. So we cut it off at the crinkly bit. Thinking this through because I have, I know I wanted to use this, but I hadn't thought through enough as to how I was going to use that. Because this is goes in, the ribbon will be puckered. All right, so I'm trying to get the top bit off bit tricky when it's on attached to the bottles. Right, so I'll put that on. Now I want to pleat it slightly as I'm going round. As I'm going pulling the tape off, I'm pleating it round so it sits nicer. <sighs> so that's wrapped right around that bit. Then this will shape. You need to hold the bolt in place. Tear that and restart it. It's going a bit wonky. It's lovely, but it's not fixing very much. So, what can we use this? So, I've got these bows which I'm going to use instead of the washi because the washi didn't fit very well. So, I'm going to put several bows round and then we'll have the string at the top of the um, bottle to hold the, the blooms. That's the word. I'll have a few more of these, so maybe. I'll get away with a, a couple going round. So we have bows all the way round. Thanks for watching, folks. Um, much love goes to my sister, Angela. Thank you very much um, for the idea. And um, I'll see you all, folks, tomorrow at the, um, at the dinner. Much love. See you all soon. Bye-bye.